Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about being a senior in a language. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, to become a senior developer in a programming language, do you read the whole documentation before you begin programming or do you read the basics and start programming and then figure out issues you face through the documentation, hence learning in the process? I learn through the process because seniority in a specific language is usually a very it depends on it depends a little bit on the language but uh, for the most part if you are a senior in one language uh, transitioning to another doesn't make you a junior it makes you I mean sure it might be a new language for you but any senior of quality is going to pick up a new language like like that because the as an example, if you transition between two languages that are so, with the same sort of programming, it's actually not that of a, much of a difference. So sure, it, if you transition from say web development to, I don't know, embedded systems development or something like that, where you basically work mostly with hardware, that's a big transition or vice versa. But that's not because the programming itself is vastly different. It is different for sure, but I mean a loop is still a loop, a variable is still a variable, like all the things that you sort of need. It's just that the type of development that you do and all the surrounding, like if it's hardware or libraries or tooling and deployments and like all of the, like sort of the domain that you're dealing with is in that scenario actually more important for your seniority than anything else. Because, as you can imagine, you can be like a games developer and work in, say, I don't know, C Sharp for the longest time, right? But you might never work in .NET or you might or ASP or something like that, where you don't really do web. And then, if you've never done web, but you've only worked in, say, Unity or something like that, well, then the transition is probably going to be more... It's not... I mean, you're a senior in terms of that you know the C Sharp language, but you probably don't know how to program web or do games development effectively so that's where the real like the real difference in seniority comes so most of the like there is no one who reads the entire documentation that I know of and then retains that information because and the reason why I know that is because the entire documentation is bigger than the in like the collective brains of all the people who uh, who uh, wrote the uh, wrote the spec like there's no software device like saying like if I'm Swedish do I know all the words in Sweden or like in the Swedish language of course not yet here I am born and raised it's the same thing for anybody from any country right you don't know everything about everything it doesn't make any sense like would you why would you it's like why would you force everybody to read the entire dictionary just so to be able to say that they are they are what a senior level at I don't know French, Spanish. Like doesn't make sense. Effective communication and being able to produce results is the thing that makes you a senior. And the same thing is true for languages, where most senior software developers are seniors because they have gotten to a level where the programming language doesn't really matter so much anymore. That's when you are at like a really decent, like that's a, a good level for a senior level software developer. Where y you, as I like to say, a senior level software developer is an insurance policy. It's someone you bring into a team to guarantee success, basically, for whatever you're doing. So in web, for example, a senior level software developer is usually someone who can do all the coding themselves almost regardless of what happens they can set up a team and like a work process that is usually a mirror of their own work process of course but they have the maturity to be able to work at all levels and this is where seniority becomes a little bit fluffy because if you work as a freelancer for example and you only work on your own small project then yeah you might be a senior freelancing type of programmer but for the really big IT companies who need like a person who is I mean it's still a senior but they need someone who knows how to set up CI pipelines and know how to like work with QA teams and like they, there's because they're, the process is bigger at that scale so there's more involved there's the range of things you sort of have to know in order to be effective is bigger it's uh, in a sense it's like Formula One drivers versus cab drivers or like NASCAR racing and so forth there's different types of racing or 
at different levels and uh, that's where the this like fussiness comes in but even if you are a senior in a specific language uh, and moving to another language as I said you're still a senior it's just that this specific language is new to you or this specific framework or something like that and for m most cases it really doesn't matter all that much because the thing that people are usually scared of when they you know trying to hire for people like we need a senior dotnet developer a senior something like that and so forth and so forth the reason why we're very specific about the language is either because we don't know any better as the people who are doing the hiring and I've been part of stuff like that unfortunately where I work with people who like they say oh we only hire say senior react developers and I go why not just bring in a senior front-end developer oh yeah but if they haven't worked in react then surely they cannot learn that and I'm going to go if they are a senior angular developer view or whatever and I can like just get, get to talk to them I can immediately figure out how fast they're gonna pick up react because it's not that it's the same thing the other way around the seniority is not down to just this tool because then sure then you have someone you, you can claim is a senior in that tool but that is like I've said before that's like saying that you're a senior WordPress developer in a when you're looking for a senior you're not looking for someone who is a senior in a single tool and then like a complete idiot about everything else in the entire process a real senior software developer is someone who has a full understanding of code from computer to production and all the steps in between. You can call that a full stack developer if you want, but at the end of the day, that is what it comes down to. Uh, because the value of software is coming from the fact that it's doing something for somebody else. And on average, a real senior will be able to produce those results regardless of language. Uh, you might not, as a new person in a new language or a senior, be in familiar with all the ways you can optimize things or all the conventions and so forth, but you will still be able to ship something that is of production quality, like uh, professional grade uh, level, if that makes sense. So what I want you to take away from this is that usually seniors learn by coding, like you get your hands dirty, you maybe you learn the basics as you were saying and then you kind of go through things and you start coding and then you find issues, you check the documentation and then you do that same thing, it's how everybody learns, nobody learns the entire documentation because as I said before, nobody knows that stuff when they sit down, it's like, I mean, do you know every traffic sign in your entire country? No, probably not do you know, but yet you're supposed to, right? Uh, do you know every word in your own language? Probably not. And programmers are just the same. The thing that makes you senior in a language or like you, whatever is more about that you're trying to capture that you have an individual who will be able to ensure success. Someone who really knows their stuff, knows how to ship things, knows how to set everything up, etc, etc. And that is bigger than any specific tool if you're good at your job. If you're a senior in just the tool itself, then by the vast majority of uh, companies and developers, you're not a senior. Like you can absolutely claim that you're a senior something in that specific tool. If it's a specific platform like WordPress or you know Django or whatever, like but but then like then that is the only tool that you are a senior in. Then you're like and if you don't know anything else about like how to develop develop software or deliver things, you're sort of useless to the vast majority. This transitioning that I'm talking about, learning one thing and moving and still maintaining your role or like your seniority status is really down to how well do you know how to ship software and when you get to a senior level in that regard the language is almost pointless it takes a real senior software developer very little time to learn a new to, to adopt a new tool they've probably done it more than a few times at this point and they've re come to a, really come to that level where it's almost like learning for me like Swedish versus Norwegian I'm not I don't speak Norwegian but it's so similar that I sort of like, yeah, I could probably swing that if I just wanted to. And for most people, uh, or for most people who have real, real uh, uh, professional grade software experience, the language is usually just a formality. Have a great day.